Good morning from Big Sky Country. I'm Stacy, owner of Montana Used Bricks. And today I wanna to talk about something that a lot of people might consider a little boring and they're gonna click off right away, which is fine. But if you've been doing BrickLink for any length of time, you might wanna just listen to see if there's some information in this that might be useful to you. I'm gonna be talking about taxes for your business. And I wanna put out a disclaimer up front right now, I am not a tax accountant at all. I'm not a CPA, I'm not a tax accountant, and I'm not here to give you tax advice. What I'm here is to give you information, things for you to think about, things for you to ponder, and maybe consider going forward. And I'm gonna base all this on how I do things. Everybody does their expenses and their taxes a little bit differently. That's totally up to you. All I wanna to do today is just give you some ideas and things to think about. So the first thing is, a lot of people are wondering, do I even have to pay taxes? So I did a Google search this morning and there's a bunch of stuff out there on when you should be paying taxes for your business. So I'm gonna read a couple of them that came up and it's got the source link. So if you wanna go look for yourselves, you can. But here's a couple of things. The first one, and I talked about this in another video when I was talking about making BrickLink a business, not a hobby. And I think I read something probably similar to this, but it is, at which point is a hobby considered a business? A business is an activity where the owner intends to yield a profit. There's a hobby or business rule of thumb called safe harbor rule, which is delineated in Internal Revenue Code, Section 183. That's a lot of information you probably didn't need. If your activity earned a profit in three years of the past five years, it may be considered a business. So if you're doing BrickLink and you are seeing a profit, you may want to consider starting to count that money on your taxes. So what's the threshold? And there's two of them I'm going to read here. How much money can you make selling online before paying taxes? You must file a return if you earn 400 or more in net earnings from your business. Net earnings equal taxable business income minus allowable business deductions. That was from a while ago. So there was one that has to do with paying taxes in 2022, which is, the IRS has announced that it is changing the threshold for taxable income for online sellers starting for 2022 sales. In the year 2022, the threshold for reportable income will drop significantly to $600 with no transaction minimum. I think what they're saying is the threshold has gone from 400 to 600. So if you're making more than $600 profit, you're going to want to put that on your taxes. But, you know, again, totally up to you on what you want to do. I'm not a tax accountant. This was just a quick Google search. <laughs> when we started this business in 2015, we started in October. And between October and the end of the year, we didn't make much money because we had just started out. In 2016, we made a little bit more. So my husband, we were using TurboTax at the time. He tried to figure it out, put it into TurboTax. But... So in 2017, we built this shop. We were making quite a bit more money than we did in 2016 because 2017 is when I really started to focus on the business, when I made the decision I wanted to make something of this. And as we're going through all of this, my husband starts to get a little bit worried about the taxes because he really struggled to kind of figure out how to do the taxes in 2016. But now that we had all this other stuff, he looked at me and said, maybe it's time. <laughs> so we luckily had an acquaintance that is a CPA. I immediately called her and said, look, this is what we're doing. We wanna know what we should be doing with our taxes. Can we hire you? And luckily she's like, yeah, sure. And she was a little surprised um, by what we were doing. Of course, people always are. And to see the fact that we were making money at it. But she went through and she walked us through how everything was calculated. And I can tell you that my mind just went to mush. I have no idea what she said, but she did our taxes and everything was good. And now every year we just hand over a pile of paper and say, here you go. And she figures it out. 
to build up to tax day, I do my finances once a month and I have what I call my PayPal packet. I would say that 95% of my income goes through PayPal. And for me, that works great because you can run these monthly reports. The monthly reports that I run is this monthly sheet that has a breakdown of everything from expenses to income to refunds to taxes that are taken out and I print this out and then there's also an Excel spreadsheet that I use that shows every transaction. Out of that I pull out a list and I put it in Excel and it's just a list of all my monthly expenses and where that money is going so that I have some kind of documentation on what I spent all my money on. So what do I do with that information? I have all this information, that's great, what do I do with it? I use Quicken. I'm not sponsored by Quicken or anything, use whatever you want. I just use Quicken because I was using that prior to even having a business. I used it for personal stuff. I love Quicken because there's so much you can do with it. You can keep track of so many things. So I have my PayPal account on there. We have a separate checking and savings specifically for our business and I can keep that on Quicken. I also do an out of pocket. That's when, when we we're at Walmart and it's like, oh yeah, I need to get some packing tape and I just throw it onto my personal stuff and then I'll make sure that I calculate it in Quicken so we know all that's in there. Out of Quicken, once a month, I do another report. This is why I say it's my PayPal packet. I staple everything together at the end of the month, but I get a really nice report that looks like this that has a breakdown of everything that we've done. This is for the entire year, which is why it's two sheets of paper and it breaks out everything. To give you an idea of what is on there, here is just the totals that I'm looking at. And this is all our expenses for 2022, which shows you how much we had coming in and how much we had going out. I did want to highlight that it looks like we are in the red for the year, but this doesn't take into account that I had money in my savings that covered all the personal expenses and also we had some money set aside for my husband's new computer because he needed a better computer to be able to look for the minifig part. So that's under the office supplies. When I give the sheet to my tax accountant, it has all the breakdown of what each of these are and what's in there because shipping includes the postal costs and also all the envelopes and boxes and packing tape and all the stuff that we use for shipping. And that's all broke out for her as is the office supplies, the different fees from PayPal, Bricklink, eBay, all of that is in there. That's what we give to our tax accountant along with on Bricklink you can do an available on your store inventory and so I print out something similar to this which shows her at the end of the year this is what we had in inventory what our costs were and what we paid for those parts and it's really confusing to me because we have containers and containers of parts that aren't in inventory yet and she's able to somehow calculate those along with what we actually have in the inventory and she does her magic that's why we hire her <laughs> so that's all the stuff i collect throughout the year i do that every month and then at the end of the year i give her a copy of the quicken cash flow report and the availability in my Bricklink store. And that's basically the only two pieces of paper I give to her. And she's able to figure out our business taxes from that. In the time that we've been doing this business for the last seven years, we've never really had to pay taxes on the business. It's always been because of our personal income. But she does have us put quite a bit aside for taxes just in case and she has us put 30% of our income into a savings account and we don't touch that throughout the year. And I have a formula that I use that's in Excel that shows me how much we've made this year and how much I need to set aside for taxes. And I make sure that I always put that 30% into savings and I don't touch that. At the end of the year, once we do pay our taxes, anything that's left in there in our savings is now our vacation fund, usually to go to Vegas. 
because I think our business makes just enough where we're not being taxed all that much because we do have a lot of expenses. Certain things that we calculate out based on how much we use for personal and how much for the business and the business pays for all of that. So we have quite a bit of expenses that we do put on here. I am very careful though about keeping the personal expenses and the business expenses separate. In fact, a lot of times my accountant will call me and she said, are you sure that all these sets and parts you bought are not for your inventory? It's like, nope, they were personal use, no way involved in the business. That's why I'm very careful about keeping track. But the whole point to our BrickLink store is so that we're able to buy those sets, we're able to buy parts that we're missing to build sets that we would like to build. And I wanna make sure that that's separate because that is not part of inventory. I know I gave you a lot of information, but I just wanted to give you some ideas, some things to think about going forward, especially now that we're getting close to tax day and you're getting ready to prep for your taxes. Just keep all of this in the back of your mind as you're going through and doing your taxes. You wanna make sure that you are running your BrickLink store as a business if you are making a profit because you don't wanna get caught later on. For those of you that do pay taxes, I would be curious, do you have any specific thing do you do? Do you put money aside or do you just wait and see how things shake out at the end of the year? Do you do it on your own like through TurboTax or have you hired somebody to help you with those taxes? I would be curious about that. If there's something I missed that you're like, oh, you know what, you probably should have mentioned this, please put that in the comments because maybe it's something I should be doing that maybe I'm overlooking as well. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it that thumbs up. If you really enjoyed it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next video. Bye.